my name is Hannah. Welcome back to Savage Reads and I have a very special video today. When I reached a thousand subscribers, my amazing husband reached out to a few of my very favorite booktubers and asked for some book recommendations and put together the sweetest video for me and I have gone through and read the book recommendations that I received. So I wanted to take this opportunity to shout out each of their channels and talk about the books that they recommended. But before we jump into that, I thought I would update you on the projects I've been working on. So I finished this one. This is my little nature scene, which is fine. I learned some new things, trying out some new things, but I'm doing another one in the same size, but I don't really know what I'm doing here. So it is just tons of flowers. And I'm going from the perspective of looking down on them. So I'm not getting any of that like nice side profile things that I got in the last one. This is just a mess. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna like it when it's done, but I am just filling this in. So I'm still working on it. I'm, I watercolored the whole background, but then I am working on just filling this in with as many flowers and leaves as I possibly can. And we'll see how that ends up. And if I like it, honestly, the process I don't find quite as fun as doing something more like this one because with a project like this I can work on a corner and then I can say check done off the list and it feels nice to be able to say I stitched these trees and they are done and I'm not going to touch them anymore but on a project like this I say okay I am going to stitch a bunch of these little roses I have to put the roses all over the whole thing and none of it feels complete until the whole thing comes together. So we'll see what happens with it. But that's where I am with my embroidery projects because I can't put them down. I just really want to be stitching all the time. But that's where I am with the projects. Let's jump in to some of these amazing booktubers and the amazing books that they recommended. The first channel I want to talk about is the amazing Margaret Pinard. And she not only is a booktuber, but she is an author as well. And you can go buy her books on Amazon, check them out. And she does a lot of live shows with writing sprints and has a good community going around that. So if you're interested in a good writing community, make sure to check her out. She recommended that I read one of two books. She recommended Islands of Abandonment or a paradise built in hell and islands of abandonment was the one that was available at my library so i picked up islands of abandonment life in the post-human landscape by cal flynn and this was an interesting one because i had different expectations based on the title going into it i thought we were really going to lean on the abandoned landscapes how do they recover what happens with nature? And it did, it absolutely did, but it wasn't really from an objective scientific viewpoint, but it had those elements. The writing was really beautiful and immersive and how does it feel to be in these abandoned environments? And yes, what happens after places have been abandoned, after horrible disasters for the environment and how does it recover? It talks about the actual process and the science and whatever behind it. It does talk about that, but it really sinks you into this beautiful writing where you feel where you are. Now, this feels very Margaret. I appreciate this because I can definitely see her style in this. It has some lovely writing and just a really interesting idea. When we talk about environmental disasters, I have heard many arguments for we need to go in and fix what we have ruined. Us humans have gone in and polluted an environment and it is our job to go clean it up. Or it is our job to take care of what we have done, clean up this abandoned place, make it livable, make it clean, orderly, be good people who take care of the world, right? That is a very valid camp and I completely understand that. But I liked that this was sharing a slightly different perspective in that a lot of times the best thing we can do 
is to leave it alone. And the uh, earth and nature has a way of taking care of things that is way more intelligent than anything we could come up with. And so I thought that it was an interesting discussion and thought of ideas. And so if you are going for a book that has those elements of science, but also has kind of lovely writing, you're going to like this. If you feel a little put off by writing that isn't just to the point, you might not be in the right mood for it. So I do think you need to go into it realizing that it's going to be a little bit about setting that atmosphere and tone, but it still was very interesting and I did enjoy the topics and the discussion. So thank you so much, Margaret. Now, one of my absolutely favorite booktubers was in that video my husband made. And so quick shout out to Caitlin over at Bandy's Books. She didn't recommend a book, but I get so many of my book recommendations from her. So make sure to check her out. She reads such an amazing variety of books and a lot of contemporary literary fiction that is just so good. And so when she says that a book is a must read, I always put it on my list. I never feel bad about that. So highly recommend you go check out Caitlin. She is fantastic. Now, one of my other favorite channels is Audrey at Audrey Approved, and she reads some amazing books. And I know I can always trust her with some of the best nonfiction recommendations. Anytime she recommends a nonfiction book, I know it is going to be the top of my list. I also trust her fiction recommendations as well. She reads a really fun variety of books, and you can tell that she's really thought through the things that she says about them. So her videos are just a must watch and she has so many great recommendations and she recommended that I pick up the book Shadow Divers. Now this is one that had actually been on my list because I heard her talk about it and it went right to the top of the list and I am so glad that I picked this up because I don't know when I would have gotten to it and this was excellent. This was a five-star read for me. This book is following the mystery of some deep sea divers who find a German U-boat that has been sunk off the coast of New Jersey. And it has been there for a long time and nobody knows what it's doing there. And they feel like they have a responsibility to solve the mystery, figure out where this boat came from, why it was where it was, and give their the families of the crew closure and they are going to solve the mystery. And it is so interesting to go into the logistics of deep sea diving and the life-threatening dangers that these divers put themselves against and also the history of the German U-boat. And so I thought that it was a really interesting mystery super cool that it is a real story when it feels like something that could be a movie easily. One thing it did make me do is feel like I will never go scuba diving. There are too many things that go wrong and it is terrifying, but this book was absolutely fascinating and just highly recommend. Even if you don't like learning about U-boats or scuba diving, the way that this was written was gripping. You can't put it down. So highly recommend. Thank you so much, Audrey. As always, you know exactly what kind of nonfiction book to recommend. I absolutely adore the channel of Melinda at A Web of Stories. I think that the way she talks about books is just so great. I will turn on her videos and listen to them all day. She is fantastic. And so she recommended that I read to my daughter the book Inkheart. Now I actually did a couple years ago, already did that one, but this is a great recommendation. I don't think I've talked about it on the channel. And I read this to my daughter out loud a couple years ago. She loved it. If you are a book lover and your kids are book lovers, they're going to like this. You're going to like this. It just pulls you in to the magic of books. The whole premise of the book is we have our main character, Maggie, who her father can read books. And when he reads out loud, the characters come to life. Literally, he can read things out of books with his voice. And if books contain magic for you, this 
This is a great one. I remember reading this as a kid and to read it to my daughter was a joy. So thank you, Melinda. Yes, I've already read it, but it is a great one to think back on because that was really fun. And finally, the amazing Jolene at Bookworm Adventure Girl. She uh, focuses on Canadian literature and is the nicest person that you will ever see. She is just such a wonderful positive force and has amazing book recommendations and helps me find books that are set in Canada that I might not have found otherwise. She is just fantastic. She recommended a few different books. She recommended two different authors. We have Richard Wagamacy and um, Anne-Marie MacDonald. Now, I really wanted to read the books by Anne-Marie MacDonald. Um, she recommended Fall on Your Knees and The Way the Crow Flies, but sadly, they were not at my library. They are going on my list, though. I am still going to try to read those at some point, but I did have Indian Horse by Richard Wagamacy at the library, and Jolene said this one was her favorite by him. I have read a book by this author before, which is why I was really excited to try another one because that one was also a five star for me, but it was a nonfiction. I read One Drum Stories and Ceremonies for a Planet. One Drum was focused more on his personal memoir mixed with stories and traditions, and it was really lovely. I just read that book thinking this is what I need. It was wise, it was something that helped me stop and be present in my life and be more mindful, and so I thought that it was really lovely. Now, I was not prepared for how good Indian Horse was going to be. I might have to pick up more books by Richard Wagamacy because this book was incredible. We follow our main character, Saul Indian Horse, and he has a very difficult life. We deal with some very heavy topics. We talk about his time in a residential school, what he feels is his salvation through hockey, search for um, connection and meaning while dealing with horrible racism at the time, and then how he deals with the problems in his past and how he can build to move forward through really difficult times. At first, as I start the book, I'm thinking, all right, so this is, this is good. We're learning a bit about his culture, his family. Oh, we're seeing some really horrible trials. We're seeing this residential school. And then for a while, I thought, Am I just reading a book about hockey? Did I get tricked into reading a book about hockey? I don't really know much about hockey, but you know what? I was fine with it. I was on board and you know what? It turned out to be so much more and I did cry at the end of this book. It was beautiful and painful and 100% worth picking up. I highly recommend this book. Jolene, thank you so much for sharing this with me. I'm so glad that I picked it up and I'm going to have to read more by the same author because this was an excellent book. You know, that perfect fiction book that not only tells an interesting story, but tells it in a way that you feel like you have changed as a person. And I think that this book hit on that. So thank you to these wonderful booktubers. Please make sure to check out their channels. I hope you have found a book here that you might want to read. These were all really excellent books and I always appreciate book recommendations. So thank you so much. If you have any thoughts on these books, let me know in the comments down below and I will see you all soon with another book wrap up. Thanks.